Hello students, in this video I will be going through two examples where we are going to solve polynomial equations by factoring completely. Okay, so when I say we're solving polynomial equation, again, it, mean the same, it means the same thing as solving for the roots, it means the same thing as finding the x-intercepts. So let's find what the roots are for this sixth degree polynomial. So by inspection right now, the way that this equation is written, there is no GCF, and it's not written in a quadratic form, because if you recall, quadratic forms usually um, take the shape of either a binomial or a trinomial, right? So again, in order for a polynomial to take on a quadratic form, it would look, it would have to look something to this effect, right? Where it is either a trinomial or if the middle coefficient is zero, then it would be a binomial. In this case, this is neither one of those cases, okay? So how are we going to be able to solve this by factoring? Well, as it turns out, these questions are actually like engineered, cooked up for you to practice this very skill of factoring by grouping. What do I mean by this? So if you look at this right now, this equation, that um, there are common factors, not amongst the entire expression, but of parts of this. Hence, this technique is called factoring by grouping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to observe the, um, I want to observe the left half of the uh, left side of this equation and the right half of the left side of this equation. And what I notice is, okay, that there is indeed a common factor between those two groups. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out the GCF from those two groups. And if I do, I will end up with x to the fourth, x squared minus five. And over here, uh, if I factor out a negative four, I'll end up with x squared minus five. So from this step, you can then see, hmm, there is indeed a common factor between the left half and right half of this expression. And that common factor is x squared minus five. So I am going to factor even further and uh, I wanna pull out the x squared minus five. And what I'll be left with is x to the fourth minus four equal to zero. The problem doesn't conclude here because I can continue factoring further. X squared minus five, technically that can factor into X plus five. I'm sorry, not X plus five. X plus square root of five and X minus square root of five. And the X to the fourth minus four, well, that is a difference of square. That is X squared minus two x squared plus 2. And I can continue factoring even further, okay, because I notice that x squared minus 2, again, that is a difference of squares. So I can continue factoring that, and I'm going to rewrite everything. This becomes x plus radical 2, x minus radical 2. And I have x squared plus 2, that doesn't factor any further. So what are the roots then? So uh, what we'll end up with is x is equal to plus or minus square root of five, plus or minus square root of two. And if you look at this guy, the imaginary portion, right? If I have x squared plus two is equal to zero, so therefore x squared will equal to negative two, or x will equal to plus or minus square root of two i. So, final answer, I have six roots here, four of which are real and two of which are imaginary. Let's take a look at another example. Again, I'm going to factor completely and, uh, and I'm going to solve for the roots by factoring. So, Upon inspection, I immediately notice that there is a common factor of x, so I will factor that out. So I end up with x times x to the sixth plus 4x to the fourth 
minus 4x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. And very similar to the last problem, I noticed that there's no other common factor between the four terms that's inside of that bracket. However, if I apply the same technique as before, where I look at the left and right half of that expression, I immediately notice that there is indeed a common factor between the left half and right half. The left half is x to the fourth, x squared plus 1. And the right half becomes minus 4, x squared plus 1. And from here, it's rather clear that the common factor of this entire expression is x squared plus 1. So I can factor further. This is x squared plus 1 times x to the fourth minus 4 equal to 0. I'm just going to get rid of these brackets here because there's really no need for that. Remember, multiplication is associative, so it doesn't matter how what order we multiply in. And the x squared plus 1 doesn't factor any further. However, the x to the fourth minus 4 does. And that factors into x squared plus 2, x squared minus 2. And the last term, that last factor there, can factor even further. And what I'll end up with is x plus radical 2, x minus radical 2. So what are my roots? Well, my roots are 0 plus or minus i plus or minus radical 2i and plus or minus radical 2. Here are all the roots 